Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Tropical Edition. Thanks for being here with me to take a look at the tropics that just won't die. That's right. That's the common theme here in Vest 94L, just southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. This is our system that we'll be watching all of this week that could potentially become our next tropical storm. And it could actually come very close or over the Leeward Islands come next weekend. We're also watching massive tropical moisture from the eastern Pacific that could funnel up through the Caribbean and give rise to, you guessed it, more coastal systems, coastal low pressures, just in time for next weekend along the U.S. East Coast. We'll get into all the details along with all your tropical troubles here. I want to thank you personally for joining me on this weather journey. Let's get into it. Tropical satellite photo of the MDR of the Atlantic here is Invest 94L becoming much better organized. You see overnight, a lot of the showers and thunderstorms have reconsolidated on the south and southwest corner. Also some moisture on the northern side. Here's what's left of Sean. It's slowly going to become a remnant low as it's going to become absorbed by Invest 94L as that's going to become the primary system as we go in time. So we're taking a look at Invest 94L here. Take a look at this. Yeah, this system is just south of the Cape Verde Islands. This is going to be our primary system we're going to be watching over the next several days. And as you can see, watch as we put this into motion. There it is by the 17th here on Tuesday. This puts the Leeward Islands, Lesser Antilles region, even Puerto Rico on notice here because by the 19th heading on into the 20th, you can see where Sean is just south of Sean at this point is going to be getting into this region. Sean will be a fading memory as it succumbs to dry air and wind shear. But by the point that uh, this system, potentially a tropical storm by then, by the 21st, look at where the area of low pressure is heading right over the Leeward Islands here. The Virgin Islands, Leeward Islands over towards Puerto Rico here by the 21st. So this would put us right in line with just about, uh, say, next, the end of this week into next weekend. So we have some time to watch this, but this could become a factor here as we've been getting affected quite a bit. Now you can see here on the European model, this system is being driven northward at this time by a big trough along the U.S. East Coast. You see this big plume of tropical moisture heading out of the Caribbean. And it's this system that is going to help push the system potentially towards the north and maybe getting it out of the way just in time for Bermuda. You can see behind it, though, look at the intertropical convergence zone here across much of the MDR. It is sinking further to the south. You have this big area of high pressure to the northeast. Look at all this tropical moisture across the Cayman Islands and Jamaica. This is in response to the eastern Pacific, and we got a mega blocking high building in along the U.S. East Coast here, as you can see. Look at that. Lots of severe weather back here across the plains. But yeah, this is something we're going to have to watch. This is going to be a trend, and we'll have to see if anything spins out of this. But you can see the entire time as we go through the next several days, here's the 17th into the 18th, the common theme is to bring this tropical moisture from the eastern Pacific into the central and western Caribbean and eventually up through the eastern Bahamas all the way up here towards Bermuda. So taking a look at the GFS model, comparing it to our European counterpart here, take a look at this. This is Invest 90. Or L here. So essentially, this system looking on the GFS model is getting its act together pretty quickly here. And as we head towards the 19th here into the 20th, you can see there it is, just like the European model, heading just south of where Sean is, or should I say was, and the system heading a little bit stronger and more towards the northeast. So less effects here on the GFS model. You can see the Leeward Islands here. It's looking like the GFS is stronger further north, as is typical. And as you can see here, as we continue to go in time, the system taking a recurve very similar to that of the European model. And right at the tail end of this whole frontal boundary system, you can see east of Bermuda, system continuing to recurve out into the open Atlantic here. But look, one thing the GFS does, and you have to watch out for this time of year because... Uh, the perfect storm in the early 90s, 91, was a, a very good uh, indication of this 
a good example. You can see combining with a low pressure system that's coming off the U.S. East Coast and the system becoming a massive area of low pressure and retrograding back towards the west here as we get into October 26. So you can see two distinct areas of low pressure. Whether this will happen, European models continuing to indicate this won't happen, but we do have to keep an eye on it because this time of year, this can happen and it could really affect parts of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, New Brunswick. It may be, well, this isn't indicating uh, parts of New New England here, but it could if it continues back westward here. So something we got to keep an eye on here, these low pressure systems can often get blocked up, especially when you have these big area of high pressures to the northeast. Now, as you continue here, look at this little feature. This is pretty far out. This is the 27th. So let's just back up just a tear. It's the Gulf is mostly clear until we get to about the 25th of October. We see this feature spinning up into the Western Gulf. And could this actually become tropical and affect parts of Texas and Louisiana or the North Central Gulf Coast? That's something we'll have to keep an eye on here. GFS indicating continued tropical moisture come late week. As we get into the Caribbean, you can see from the Eastern Pacific here into parts of the Cayman Islands, Latin America here, Jamaica, lots of heavy rain as we head through October 24th here. Take a look at this. This is uh, Cayman Islands here. Jamaica is right over here. Lots of tropical moisture feeding to the north, and that potentially helps feed into our western gulf of mexico system so this is a trend we're gonna have to keep an eye on as we go further out into the atlantic here there are actually still features that we'll be needing to keep an eye on out here so the tropics are far from dead i'd like to say they are but they're not and we'll continue to watch this as we go through the end of october and I wanted to make note here, there is no shortage of warm water here from the MDR all the way to the Gulf and Caribbean. Plenty of warm water for Invest 94L to develop. And as we take a look at the intensity outlook of Invest 94L, very good chance this becomes a maximum tropical storm. Potentially a few models bringing this up towards hurricane, especially as it starts to recurve right around the Caribbean islands. Mid-level dry air analysis here, thanks to tropical tidbits. We're focusing here mostly on our Invest 94L system as it makes its trek across the Atlantic. You can see dry air is not going to be much of a factor as we head westward here. You see that area of high pressure to the north. It keeps that system on a westward jaunt here as we head through Thursday. You can see, yeah, it is a bit weaker, but it's not really being infect affected here by much dry air. So here we go across the Western Caribbean rainfall amounts. So as we go through Tuesday here, we're picking up about 10 to 20 millimeters of rainfall from Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, a little bit heavier here into parts of the Central American area. So we're looking at anywhere from an inch or less here uh, and anywhere from close to 100 millimeters in some of these areas here to south of Belize and westward here. Oh, that's upwards of three to four inches. So yeah, as we continue to go into motion here, you can see heavier tropical moisture later in the week as we head towards Thursday into Friday. Look at this. This is going to be a surge of tropical moisture in excess of 90 to 100 millimeters. That's going to be upwards of three to four inches. And as we head to the Eastern Caribbean here, there we go. So it's dry first part of the week from Trinidad, Tobago, all the way up to Puerto Rico, Hispaniola. And we head towards the end of the week. You see off your screen here, look at this big plume of tropical moisture. That's our next tropical wave uh, moving in with response to that potential Invest 94L system. So, yeah, this could be our next tropical storm. Keep an eye out here on the islands. It could bring some very heavy rain come next weekend. So taking a look at the Eastern Pacific here, what do we got going on here? Well, we got a lot going on. We got a few areas of concern we're going to be watching. Most likely this system here will be spinning up over the next 24 to 48 hours. Look where it does go, though, by the 21st. We have some time to watch this, but this could actually develop into a very large tropical cyclone here and then steer towards the coast. Now, granted, it will be getting into cooler water by the 23rd, but it will be affecting land if it continues in this general direction and maybe bringing parts of Texas and northern Mexico and eventually into the southern plains, feeding into that severe weather outbreak. And we'll be watching another system behind it here that has a lesser chance of developing. 
And as we take a look at the Western Pacific here, what is going on out here? Well, we don't have a whole lot. That's the good news. We do have a lot of tropical moisture heading on just west of the Philippines over towards Vietnam here. This is going to continue. This has been the rule here the past couple of weeks. But as you can see, we have a system moving away from Japan. We're starting to get into a little bit of a cooler season up here in Japan. So your chances of a typhoon are slowly tapering off. I'm not going to say completely, but, you know, we've been known to get some typhoons in this late season. So we'll continue to watch it here. But as we could continue to go out in time here on the European model, you know, there is the tropical moisture heading across the northern Philippines. You can see this system is packing a punch, but it doesn't show any signs of development. So as we take a look at your HRRR future radar here, you can see a smattering of showers across much of the east here with that unsettled trough just continuing. So it's, you know, all the way down to the deep south, we have some scattered showers and thunder showers. But as we continue throughout the evening hours of Sunday, you can see some of these streamers. They're affecting uh, areas around Cleveland, Akron area, uh, parts of western New York as well, near Dunkirk, Syracuse. And look at the wraparound moisture here into New England. So this is just going to continue lake effect clouds and showers as we continue anywhere from a quarter to maybe a third of an inch averaging maybe close to a half an inch but most areas as we get towards here it is uh 2 p.m 9 a.m to 2 p.m on monday this continuing across the northeast you can see wraparound moisture continuing to funnel in from the north here these uh bands off of lake erie and lake ontario oriented uh, from north to south here so you continue look at that tropical moisture off the southeast coast that just continuing look at up here in new brunswick and nova scotia as well lots of moisture with that coastal low and let's just continue to go in time here before we get into our synoptic medium range outlook here look at this yeah those streamers just continuing here 8 a.m on tuesday morning some clouds and some showers continuing but this will slowly dissipate as we head on to tuesday into your early wednesday now, if we take a look at the weather for North America here, this includes your Canadian forecast. Look at this big area of high pressure. We do have an area of low pressure just off the northeast coast. That is going to be moving out just in time for the new work week here. So high pressure is going to be building in behind it. That's going to be the rule with the exception for across the Pacific Northwest here where we could get our next system moving in. Now, as we continue to go in time here, take a look at this. You can see the west remains really unsettled, especially western Canada here, but the high pressure builds across the east here as we see through the 17th into the 18th. The only system that does make it fairly weak here into parts of the upper Midwest. So we'll be dealing with that potential as this system moves towards the east. And as you can see here, yeah, that system kind of gets caught up just in time for next weekend here. You see, most of Canada looks pretty nice here from the western part of Canada all the way eastward here. But look at the trough kicking in here across the east. Low pressures kicking in across Ontario and Quebec here, meeting up with another potential coastal low. This spells trouble for next weekend here, just in time for the weekend. I know you don't want to hear that at this point, but as you can see, Look at that. By the 21st, we have a nor'easter developing. Lots of unsettled conditions and cloudy conditions here across eastern Canada as well. you got to go back towards the west here for high pressure to be kicking into your region. And as you can see here, look what happens. Another coastal low. This could be the common theme as we go into this winter. By the way, I am putting the finishing touches on my winter 2023-24 outlook. So I should have that out very shortly here. High pressure building in behind it here. You can see a big old area of low pressure winding up across Hudson Bay up here. And look at here across the Central Plains. Yeah, we're seeing some severe weather kicking in just in time for the 24th. Big blocking high to the east. And out west here, especially from the Pacific Northwest to Western Canada, we are looking very unsettled with mountain snow and valley rain. So our European upper air pattern here, you can see that major blocking here across central Canada. And that is going to be in response to this major trough on the East Coast. Now you see it's not a negatively tilted trough, which means it's from Northeast to Southwest orientation, which means it's not going to be that strong. It's not going to result in major systems. Most of these systems are going to stay uh, just off the east coast but nevertheless you're gonna feel it it's gonna be entrenched here clouds moisture especially around the lakes 
that's going to slowly dwindle as we head throughout the week. And you see we go a little bit more neutral with this major ridge developing out west. Now, if we take a look at the medium range CFS model, it's great to look at this time of year. As we head towards next weekend, there's that massive trough I was telling you about. That's unfortunately, we're setting us up for a pattern here in the east of horrible weekends and beautiful weather in the middle of the week. That's I know that's not what you want to see, but unfortunately, that's also bad for fall foliage, uh, which is really behind this time of year, I must note. Um, and as we continue into the following week, there it is, Wednesday the 25th. Look at the ridge building. You're getting all your great weather in the middle of the week. And then look at the following weekend, a big trough kicking here across the east. So it's just not going to really uh, cooperate here if you're looking for really nice weather. Until look at this, we head towards the first week of November. Look at this. Yeah, this could be a big trough. Could this bring some early wintry conditions? It's possible, but look how quickly that trough builds in just behind it so a very fast moving pattern as we head into the first to mid part of november very typical and here's a quick word from my affiliate stay with me here i've got plenty more weather right after this i am proud to announce that i am now an affiliate with trilogy maps trilogymaps.com bringing you the most digital customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet these maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. So taking a look at Canadian rainfall amounts here. Yeah, it's the West Coast that's going to see over that 100 millimeters just west of the mountains. 100 to 125 millimeters as about three and a half, four and a half inches of rain. As you get into eastern Nova Scotia, New Finland here with the coastal systems, upwards of, say, 60 to 90 millimeters, uh, that'll be a solid two to three inches. And then here, you know, across from the areas along the U.S.-Canadian border, a few light systems, 16 to as much as 32 millimeters, that's going to be right around a solid half, two, three quarters of an inch here. So, yeah, not too bad. Most areas in central Canada uh, looking pretty dry. So our European model here for total liquid equivalent precipitation. Yeah, most of this is going to be wraparound and lake effect. You can see most of the heavier precipitation with this coastal low staying just off the coast. Uh, parts of Nantucket, maybe Cape Cod getting clipped a little bit here. But as we continue to go into motion, you can see as we go through Thursday here, early Thursday, you don't see too much in the way of weather. Most of the weather's in the northeast here and the Pacific Northwest with our next system. And as we get into the Northeast here for rainfall amounts, as I said, it's mostly wraparound and lake effect, lake enhanced there in Northern New England. That is with the wraparound. Uh, but, you know, as we go through Thursday, this isn't actually terrible. And most of the moisture from Cleveland, Buffalo, Oswego uh, County, northeastward to Burlington, and then the wraparound up here in Northern Maine. Uh, here's our coastal clipping parts in Nantucket, upwards of, say, uh, an inch and a half, two inches possible, but most areas should be uh, much less than that. So your temperature outlook here, yeah, things are going to be on the warming trend, especially across the lakes in the northeast. I know this doesn't look particularly warm, but it is actually a, a tad above average for this time of year. As we head into your Monday, lots of 50s and some near lower 60s. So as we head on into Tuesday here, you can take a look here. Look at this. This is not too bad. Uh, we do got a warming trend here across the southern plains and parts of the desert southwest. That's going to be heading east, but you can see we're slowly warming it up towards 60 here in the Ohio Valley into the northeast into your Wednesday. Look at this. Yeah, lots of 50s and 60s, but being mostly replaced by 60s and more sunshine. Uh, you can start to see evidence of our next front here, uh, cooling it down here into the 50s and even some upper 40s. But look at here into the northeast. We're well into the mid to upper 60s from the Ohio Valley into the northeast on thursday and then as we head out on to friday here look at this yeah lots of cold air behind this system uh lower 50s that's going to be in response to our next system heading in uh 60s but we will be heading towards the 50s and a lot wetter 
for the weekend, as you can see, look at this. Yeah, I know you don't like to see this for the weekend, but wet weather and lots of 50s. A extended outlook from the upper Susquehanna River Valley for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton, from New York to Pen Northeast Pennsylvania. Let's take a look Monday through Friday here. Yeah, Monday we'll have some scattered showers, mostly cloudy as those clouds wear away. Tuesday, still some scattered showers. We're holding down into the 50s, lows in the 40s, but look at Wednesday and Thursday. You know it. It's nice and sunny right in the middle of the week when you got to go to work and school, lower to mid 60s. Well, look at that. Friday, our next coastal system moving up the coast. It's going to spell bad news for this weekend. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Take a look at my Facebook page at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern to follow the tropics. And if you want to hop over to my Twitter page, it's at Weather Eastern. It's MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me. Question or comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification button so you're alerted when a video comes out.